Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining me today. Uh, my name is Nick Mislack. I'm the Segment Marketing Director for HVAC Applications here in North America. And today I'm going to talk to you about the trends and market drivers in commercial heat pump development. If you have any questions, you know, during the session at all, please drop them in the Q&A box on the 124 platform and uh, we'll answer them at the end. Appreciate it. Um, so kind of the agenda for today is we're going to go through some overall market drivers, uh, talk a little bit about applications. Um, you know, there's plenty of applications, so we're only going to touch on a few here uh, for the sake of time. And then we're going to dive into a little bit about what some of the future trends and technology are looking like in the commercial heat pump space. So there's a lot of global megatrends that affect the uh, HVACR market today. Um, there's reduction of CO2 and emissions, so climate change primarily. Urbanization, people moving into the cities and scaling upwards in high-rise buildings. Uh, food and water supply, of course, uh, the grocery store industry and all the supermarket chain going to natural refrigerants. Uh, electrification, so reduction of uh, you know burning of fossil fuels, um, high efficiency units, um, electric cars, of course, all the megatrends essentially to support that. And then digitalization, which is would be, of course, all the AI boom with the data center market and all the technology that we see in computing. So in the climate change and electrification arena, there's a lot of restrictions that are coming in terms of uh, refrigerant restrictions, basically. So lower GWP limits are coming into effect next year for a lot of different applications. So, of course, most OEMs are doing their de design cycles right now to, to meet those needs. Um, in North America, also, we're looking out towards the future when the next uh, phase down in quota comes of the HFC restrictions. So it's natural to think that when the next quota occurs, that there's going to be other restrictions that could potentially be put into place. So um, along with the heat pump market and all the rest of the different applications, we're keeping an eye on that as well to see how we can support that. And it's kind of unclear when exactly the timing may be, but and what refrigerants are going to be the next choices. But for sure, that's going to have some effect on the heat pump market and what direction the industry uh, tries to go and um, you know the future trends that occur because of that. So what's the benefit of heat pumps and why is the market transitioning to them? And what are the driving factors that are forcing the market to do it? Well, the U.S. government has a lot of initiatives right now for the reduction of the fossil fuels. So, of course, they want to reduce the greenhouse gases. With climate change and the rise of the global temperature, uh, you know, the fossil fuel you know, reduction essentially has to continue. Um, and heat pumps are one way to do that. They can decrease uh, you know, fossil fuel emissions by up to 50 percent compared to a lot of condensing gas boilers. Um, you know, and as more boilers get phased out, more heat pumps get phased in, that percentage could grow even further. Um, we talk about heat pump water heaters. So, you know, in everybody's home right now, you know, it has a water heater. It's either electric or gas primarily. Um, and even in a commercial space, there's, uh, you know, those as well. But um, heat pump water heaters can increase the en energy efficiency up to three times as well. Uh, and then that's, another, of course, another way that we can reduce the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And then in general, you know, electric heat pumps lower energy cost uh, for families. There's a lot of good plans for rebates and things that are uh, in, in play right now. Um, you know, we're not as reliant on the fossil fuels if we can transition more to electrification and heat pumps. Um, so from a national security point, that's helpful. And of course, you know, tackling the climate crisis. So, you know, getting the global warming to, uh, to, to stabilize and not continue to increase as, uh, as the trend is today. So with all the factors that are, uh, you know, tying into the heat pump market, where do we see it going in the next few years? Well, historically, if you look at, you know, some of the trends from, you know, going back to 2020 and all the way up to 2030, so the next few years here, and you have to factor in there's a lot of different heat pump applications, you know, from residential to commercial to water heating, and so on and so forth. The markets could be poised for up to 8 to 12 percent uh, increase at where we are today, basically. So as energy efficiency continues to decrease, you know, people are looking for more sustainable solutions. Uh, decarbonization, of course, is a ma major driving factor. So all these things are kind of tying into play as where we see the market going here in North America. So for sure, heat pump growth is on the rise. So where are we at in the heat pump market today? Well, the easiest way to do it is to, to break down by where the heat pumps are actually installed. So if you, if you just take a look at, you know, the building type in general, um, you know, look at people's homes. I mean, that's, a, that's where the majority of heat pumps are today. Um, you know, if you have a furnace at home, if you have a heat pump at home, um, you know, they're, they're widespread, of course, in the market. There's, you know, about 10 million units and, you know, they make up about 76% of the heat pump market overall. Uh, the other portion of the market, of course, is the commercial, and that's what we're interested in today. Uh, it's always good to touch into the residential side because that's where a lot of the growth comes, you know, especially when we talk about comfort cooling and heating applications. But the commercial area is really where we're poised for growth. The reason I uh, mentioned the residential market is important, even though we're you know, primarily interested in the commercial segment here today, is because a lot of the regulations and goals and things are driven by the residential market. There's a lot of tax credits for heat pumps. There's um, government funding for heat pump manufacturing facilities that are, you know, that's been supplied by the government last year and the year before. 
Um, there's states and counties and municipalities that have goals for decarbonization for heat pumps and, of course, the ban of natural gas and, uh, you know, furnaces. And they have, you know, pretty ambitious goals to get that done. And we're, we're taking a look at all these things because the same states and areas that do that for a residential side at some point would be looking, of course, to do the same for the commercial side, potentially. So, you know, a lot of stuff starts in residential, but then builds out towards commercial and other, uh, you know, other, other markets. So if we talk about the commercial market space now, where, and we talked about the buildings that they're going into, and of course the split between residential and commercial, um, but what are the heat pumps actually used for? The majority of the heat pumps, of course, are for reversible systems. So when we talk about residential, it's for units that can do both cooling and heating. Um, that's what we consider a reversible unit. And that today is the majority of the market for heat pumps. Uh, of course, with 10 million residential units, that percentage you know, is, is greatly affected there. But we also see a lot of reversible systems in, uh, in you know, rooftops, rooftop units. Um, of course, you can have chillers that are reversible. Um, but that's the majority of the market right there today. Um, the other good portion is the heating and hot water. So, you know, supplying heat for, you know, domestic purposes or for, you know, baseboard heating or other applications like hospitals and whatnot that need hot water. And then there's a small portion that's just, you know, heating only. So not a reversible system, doesn't need to provide any cooling, um, but just needs to prov provide heating for, you know, whatever the application uh, necessitates. So we touched a lot on the on the breakdown of the market and kind of where the different heat pump functions go, reversible, uh, heating, hot water, uh, so on and so forth. And we'll come back to that later when we talk a little bit about other applications for reversible systems. But uh, when we talk about hot water heating, which is of course a big growth area, it supports you know a lot of the government's initiatives to decrease the reliance on fossil fuels. Um, obviously, when you heat something with water, water has a good heat capacity, so it's very energy efficient. It's sustainable, so dependent on the heat source or the electrical source, um, you know, we're not as reliant on fossil fuels, so um, you can use geothermal, other sources as well. Um, the building can be set up, um, you know, depending on how you have it zoned, you can have, you know, different valves and different uh, control systems to provide different temperatures to different areas of the building. So a lot of flexibility there. And then of course, with, uh, with, with this heating type, you can do hybrid systems, right? So we understand that there's going to be a lot of cases where you're going to still need fossil fuels, right? You're still going to need a boiler or a furnace, um, but you can use a heat pump to supplement that. And that's kind of one of the big advantages here when we talk about hybrid systems and heat pumps is that it doesn't necessarily have to be all or one. It can be a mix of both and dependent on the application in the building, you know, it makes sense to do, you know, one or the other or a combination of the two. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, flexibility there to, to tailor the system kind of how, it, you know, how the end use requires it. So with all that said, what's happening with the heat pump water heating portion of the market in North America? Um, well, we see, of course, the, you know, the increase in hybrid systems, um, you know, that, that's driven, of course, by decarbonization and other factors we just talked about. Um, areas are going to have fossil fuel bans where you're going to either be required to, you know, limit the use of natural gas or limit it altogether. Um, there's potential for rebate incentives to, you know, get people away from fossil fuel um, and emissions, of course. And then the energy efficiency increase that you get over a, a traditional furnace. Um, so what we see in the market, you know, is a lot of the OEMs that are traditionally are just boiler manufacturers or furnace manufacturers are looking into, you know, these hybrid systems or developing new heat pumps from, you know, from, you know completely new product. You know, as efficiency standards change with boilers and, and furnaces as well, then there's going to be a point where it makes more sense and it's more cost effective and more energy efficient to go to a heat pump or a hybrid system. Um, the units are flexible. I mean, you can install them in existing buildings or new build, new construction. Um, you know, you can put them on roofs or if it's an air and air system, you can put them in the basement if it's a chiller. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility there with where you can install. Um, so the unit, the building doesn't need to be completely designed from the ground up, um, you know, for a heat pump. In a lot of cases, it can be retrofitted fairly easily and you can either be used to supplement what's there or to replace it. And, you know, then you can get the advantages that you would get with the heat pump. Um, over a traditional boiler or furnace type system. We see a lot of focus, of course, on heat pumps into colder climates, and uh, we'll touch on that a bit later on, but uh, that's kind of always been one of the bottlenecks for heat pumps, um, you know, whether it be for comfort cooling or for other applications, such as hot water heating. Uh, typically, you know, it, there's limitations on how these units can be installed into what climates they can go into, depending on what, of course, what type of system it is. Um, but we're seeing a lot of, you know, new technology that's enabling the market to expand its reach, so to speak, into northern areas and develop these either hybrid systems or units that can operate without any sort of supplemental heat system in, in colder climates. So when we talk about all the market trends, of course, and where are some of the applications where we can see heat pumps, you know, particularly in this case for, for hot water or hybrid type systems? Well, you have space heating, you know, reversible systems there. 
uh, used for heating hot water. And of course, they can cool it as well um, for you know, all season comfort. Um, you have domestic hot water heating, so for, for sanitary applications. Um, you can use the, the heat pump to heat the water for radiant uh, underfloor heating. Um, you can use it to supply heat to an indoor coil for heating, so hydronic systems. Um, radiator supply water, um, you can use it in combination with boilers, kind of as a hybrid system to preheat the water going in the boilers to make them more energy efficient. Um, there's lots of applications for process water heating. Um, then, of course, you can get into some of the other, you know, more off the beaten path applications like pool heating or for other applications like snow melting or ice melting. So there's really, there's a ton of flexibility on where you can use this hot water that the heat pump is generating for. Um, and if it's a reversible system, then of course, then you have it for comfort cooling as well. So with all that said, uh, where do we see the, the hydronic market going? So the hot water heating or the reversible systems that can supply both heating and cooling, um, the chiller type units. Um, we see a steady growth and that's in line with everything that's been published and you know, the shipment data that we've seen today from all the major industries. We see a strong push uh, you know, towards the future, essentially, with more hydronic heat pumps and hybrid systems. Um, so we expect that trend to continue um, into the future. So within the hydronic heat pump space, where do we see these units typically being installed? Well, uh, you see them a lot, and depending on where you're at in the, in the course of the country, you see them in office buildings, warehouses, um, schools, churches, um, hotels. So there's a really wide install base. Um, and it really comes down to where traditionally the boiler market was for these hybrid and hydronic type systems. So in a lot of cases, they, these buildings were almost always set up for boilers for heating, and now they have the opportunity to be retrofitted with either a hybrid system that can you know, be used in conjunction with an existing boiler or maybe a smaller boiler that's more energy efficient, or they can be used to replace a boiler altogether in a lot of cases and still provide the same function. So there's a lot of flexibility on kind of where these units can be installed. So it's not a, a heat pump that's meant for only one installation. Uh, there's flexibility to use it across uh, you know, basically the entire range of uh, the building environment. So when we, when we talk about the building and kind of where these units are installed at, a lot of it depends on what the necessary temperature that the, the hot water needs to reach. So when we're somewhere around, you know, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a good use for, you know, domestic or sanitary hot water. Or you can use it for, you know, radiant floor heating, space heating uh, with, with air handlers, things like that. Um, when you get a little bit higher, you know, up to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit, then we're talking about, you know, radiator type, type applications or maybe some process heating. Um, some space heating as well there too. Um, and then when you get even higher, you know, almost up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit, then we're talking about, you know, traditional, uh, you know, radiator type applications, um, baseboard heat, you know, process heating. Um, and then above that, there's a whole other category that's, you know, for really, really high temperature water that's used for industrial process heating and, and other applications like um, chemical processing and other, and other things like that. So the key takeaway there is that the majority of the market, um, you know, up to almost 60% of it is kind of in the area where heat pumps play really nicely. So um, it's a good benefit for heat pumps to use it there since they can cover in you know, the majority of the leading water temperatures that are required. And then of course there's technologies and, you know, high temperature heat pumps and things like that, that can meet the even higher temperatures that are needed for industrial purpose heating and, and other applications as well. So with all the uses of the hydronic systems and the hybrid systems, um, and of course, we see a reduction in boiler shipments as well as we have you know, targets basically from the government for decarbonization. So as, as they keep pushing the decarbonization goal, then of course, then the, re the reliance on fossil fuels and the consumption of fossil fuels has to go down. So in order to meet the, the demand, you know, the heating's not going away. We still need that portion of the heating, of course, to, to do all those purposes that we just talked about. But we have to supplement that in some way. And the way to do that is with heat pumps and hybrid systems. So. Um, you can use a heat pump essentially for almost the exact same thing as a boiler or in combination with a boiler in case, you know, the, the heat pump can't meet the necessary water temperature. You can use it kind of to preheat the boiler. So they can be kind of tied together as a hybrid system or in a lot of cases they can be replaced altogether. But I guess the end goal here is that as, as decarbonization, you know, goals continue on into the future, then the need for heat pumps almost becomes mandatory. So and that's kind of where the push is coming here in the market as well. So we talked a lot about hydronic systems and hybrid systems uh, for, you know, hot water heating um, and those types of applications. But one of the other really big applications, of course, is air to air heating. So we talk about, you know, your residential unit, your house that we talked about is the majority of the market share today for heating. You know, there's you know, 10 million residential units, as we said, and maybe 40 percent of them are heat pumps. Um, so a large portion of install base already there. But then you look at all those commercial building spaces that we, are, we just talked, talked about a few minutes ago. And there's, of course, a wide area where the heat pumps can be employed there as well in right? rooftop systems and dedicated outdoor air systems. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility there in combination with the other applications. And we see the same thing there as we do uh, in the other applications, is, and that's a constant increase in uh, heat pump market demand. 
Um, there's cases, of course, where different states and different municipalities have the same issues there where they won't allow fossil fuels. So, you know, these are technologies that are going to be, you know, increasing into the future. Um, and then, of course, that's being supported by, you know, the goals of our government as well. I mean, we started off with a residential heat pump challenge, which went very well, where all the manufacturers made heat pumps uh, for colder climates. Uh, so basically expanding the reach for heat pumps. And the same thing is, you know, is going as well for these rooftop and DOS type units. So the government is fully backing that to enable the manufacturers and help the manufacturers uh, to make heat pumps that can work in colder climates. Um, so that can be used traditionally where heat pumps couldn't be used in the northern parts of the states and in Canada, where you know furnaces were, were mandatory there as well. So um, with these types of systems, we see a large cre increase in, in demand and uh, supply also. So with all the support that we've seen from the government and the heat pump initiatives and the fossil fuel reductions, and of course, all the different applications that we talked about today, um, of course, one thing we're really focused on, and of course, the purpose of this meeting here is, you know, where do we see the different markets growing to? And, you know, residential, we see, you know, of course, heat pumps are going to still continue to expand there as well, um, you know, with rebates and things like that, energy efficiency increases that are supported by the government and, and the tax, you know, incentives and things like that. Um, so that's going to still be there, of course, but uh, the commercial segment is really the one that's kind of poised to grow the fastest and with the largest percentage of growth as well. Um, there's a lot, there's so many different opportunities that we already talked about where heat pumps can be used, where they're, you know, maybe used today, but only in smaller quantities, but they can be expanded for use. And, and then as well with the shift to colder climates, uh, the market can go into more northern states and, you know, into Canada and other parts of the world where typically heat pumps weren't as energy efficient or couldn't be used today. And then heat pump water heating is another market we see that's uh, poised for good growth. Um, there's a lot of homes right now that before just had regular water heaters, electric or gas that are moving towards heat pumps. Um, they, you know, from an energy efficiency standpoint of view, they're, they're effective. Um, there's also rebates in place there. On the commercial side, there's a good development for hot water heating. Uh, we talked about all the different end uses that you can do with this hot water, whether it be for comfort heating and cooling or for all these other different purposes like boiler preheating and use for hybrid systems and supply water, things like that. So that's another area where we see a lot of, a lot of growth potentially. So with these applications and the end use and basically where we see the market growth at, uh, we talked a lot about, you know, cold climate heat pumps and there are different areas now where they can be installed where previously they, you know, they had limited use uh, for reasons such as, you know, defrosting or just really just couldn't get, um, you know, leaving air or water temperatures to be as high as the application needed to be. Um, so, you know, if you look at a map, basically you can split the country in kind of a di couple different regions. Um, you know, the areas essentially that are, you know, more northern, obviously, is where you typically need more heat. And, you know, historically that's been supplied by furnaces and boilers and things like that. But we have technology and, and Dan Falls now we have a lot of technology as well that we're developing to support the growth into cold climates. So one technology I want to talk about specifically um, is our Dan Falls PSH scroll compressor. Uh, this is a compressor that's designed for, for heat pumps and it's optimized for heat pump use. Um, it can be used in all the applications we just talked about. Um, it can be combined in manifolds and, and, and different configurations to get good system flexibility. Uh, it can be set up to do different injection uh, strategies. So uh, whether you're just looking, on, looking to add it to a system or convert a system over to a heat pump and just want simplicity, you can use it in a system that just is liquid injection only. Um, or you can use it with a combination of vapor or wet injection with, um, you know, to take advantage essentially of the increased operating map, but also the benefits that you get for energy efficiency. Uh, so it's one of the technologies at Danfoss that we're, that we're pretty proud about. And um, yeah, it's great to see the heat pump growth uh, into the market and particularly with uh, the Danfoss products. So I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to say a few words here today about the commercial market uh, for heat pumps and the growth that we see within Danfoss, but then also the trends that we see um, from the government and from other, um, you know, other key stakeholders. Um, we have a few minutes, so uh, we can take a few questions. Um, let me take a look at the chat box and see what we have. So the first question I see is about the future refrigerants. I know we touched on that a little bit, but the question is specifically about how we see the heat pump market in North America with other refrigerants um, that may be coming in the future, like propane or, or more CO2 uh, type applications. Um, that's a good question. I mean, we see a, you know a lot of that now. There's a lot of uh, Department of Energy working groups and um, you know, stakeholders that are you know looking at the exact same exact thing right now, basically to see you know what's going to be the call it the the next refrigerant of the future or the next refrigerant of the next few years with an even lower GWP. Um, as we know, of course, in other parts of the world, um, you know, propane um, R290 is you know being widely adopted. Um, it's a great you know great um, refrigerant for heat pump applications. 
Uh, of course, there are some safety re requirements as well with propane that you know North America needs to, to figure out. Um, but that could be one option potentially. There's of course a lot of other refrigerants out there, and you know there's a lot of analysis being done to see which ones make good choices for heat pumps. Um, you know, depending on the refrigerant, there's restrictions and maybe where it can be used. Some refrigerants can't be used in you know really cold climates. Um, some refrigerants have limitations on um, you know temperatures. Um, so there, it's kind of a it's kind of a trade off. I mean, it really comes down to what you know what the regulations allow and kind of where we see the best fit in the market in terms of energy efficiency and flexibility. So the next question I see is about uh, future energy efficiency regulations uh, as they pertain to heat pump growth. Yeah, that's for sure. That's an area that we're definitely taking a look at. We know a lot of the standards right now are being revised to include things that they didn't have traditionally. So if we take a look at rooftop uh, standards, for example, we know that there's changes in the standard to have, you know, uh, compressor or crankcase heater power, you know, economizer, um, power consumptions, other areas where they're trying to make the standards more comprehensive of how the equipment's actually